What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. And in this episode, I want to talk to you about how to use leverage to grow your woodworking business. Let's dive in. All right, well, welcome back to the show. Welcome back to the channel for those of you that are watching. In this episode, I wanna talk to you about how to use leverage to grow your woodworking, your custom furniture business, your handmade business. And and this is a, I know if you're already watching this, you're like, I don't understand what leverage is. I don't know what where you're going with this. Let me just walk you through this. This is gonna be one of the most important episodes that I've ever done. And I'm gonna tell you why, because this is how you stop trading time for money. Okay, for those of you that feel trapped in your job, those of you that even feel trapped in your business. We want to figure out how do we stop trading time for money and we start removing ourselves from that time equation so that you're making astronomically more per hour that you work, okay? So number one, you can work less hours and make the same amount of money. You can work the same amount of hours you're currently working and make astronomically more money. And so let's talk about what leverage is, okay? On a very fundamental level, leverage is moving something heavy with a lever. If I try to, you know, if I have something sitting here and I've got like a seesaw and I've got a rock, a big giant rock on this side of it and I've got this seesaw and I extend this out, it takes less and less energy the further this thing gets out to move that giant rock, okay, to lift it up. But if I try to move that rock right by where it is, it's really hard to move. And so... I put, it, I put it like this. What is leverage? It's moving something heavy with your brain instead of just brute force. When we think about this in, inside of business, I'm going to walk you through the different tiers of leverage, okay? So if you're an employee and you are an hourly worker, for example, there's a one-to-one -one correlation between your time and the money that you earn. I'm going to make X amount of dollars per hour. I'm going to do this, and it's going to generate this, Okay. That is a pretty low form of leverage that most people operate in, okay? If you go into the next form of leverage, it's I am managing people, okay? Or I own a business that manages people. The next form of leverage is I am an investor in a business. So I'm not even involved in the operations. I've allowed money to make me money, right? So how do we develop leverage? So how to go from like no money, I've got this brand new business and I want to develop leverage. I want to get to where I'm not working as much. I want to be able to spend more time with my family. I want to be able to um, create this leverage that you're talking about, Zach. So how do I do it? Okay. So when you first start, you have no leverage. You're the one that's building the product. You're the one that's making the stuff. You're the one that's building the furniture um, and you don't have leverage. You're trading your, your time for money. Imagine that we build a business or an organization that has enough inflow and in sales that now you're no longer the one building the furniture. You're the one managing all the other aspects of the business and you have somebody else building the furniture. They're fulfilling on the furniture. Let's say that all the other aspects of that business now don't take 40 hours a week, they take 20 hours a week. But you've gotten three times as much in sales, you have one or two employees and they build the furniture. You don't build the furniture any longer you oversee them, you make sure that they're running it correctly, you make sure that everything's, you're implementing systems, you're leading them, managing them, guiding them toward the, the destination that the business is headed, but you're still making the same amount of money that you were, you've increased the volume of the business, you've replaced yourself with a couple other people, you've removed yourself from it, and now you're making the same amount of money that you were originally, but you're working less hours. Or let's say that you're just not having to gut it out in the shop, you're not the one building the thing, okay? And then after that, let's say that, okay, let's continue to scale this, continue to grow this. Now I've hired somebody to do the administrative work that I was doing. I've hired somebody to deliver the furniture. I have workers inside the shop and I just handle a very small percentage of the things that we do. I oversee, make sure that we're managing cash correctly. Um, and here's another thing, as you get more skilled, you are able to create higher levels of leverage. What happens is like for me, for example, I've been able to create a really high level of leverage inside of Iron by Iron Woodworks. I don't build anything anymore. 
I own a woodworking business and I run the marketing campaigns for it, but everybody else inside the business runs that business for me. I don't run that business. I check on that business. We have a weekly meeting where I get information. I'm helping make decisions. But if you looked at my input into that business each week, it's maybe a few hours a week, maybe. It's very, very minimal. But I'm making more from that business now than I was making when I originally started the business, when I was the only one. And I would rather, this is my opinion, and this does depend on what industry you're in, but I would rather have a smaller piece of a bigger pie. So many entrepreneurs, they stay stuck, they stay in this rat race because they want the whole pie. Well, I don't want to hire anybody. I don't want to, have, I don't want to pay anybody to help me, right? And it's scary. Hiring your first employee is a really scary thing. I remember, that, I remember being there. But you have to figure out how to create leverage inside your business. And it's not going to be by you doing everything. You have to figure out how do I increase sales and how do I increase volume? I, I bring in somebody behind me to help me fulfill on my promises. I'm selling furniture. I'm selling whatever handmade thing I'm selling. And I just focus on the growth of the business. Now, I want to make sure that they're still getting a great product. I want to make sure that they're trained. My people are trained. There are lots of steps involved in this, but this is how you create leverage. And so another thing I would just say is that when you're doing this, you want to hire A players as much as you possibly can. The problem that you're going to have is that when you first start and you're trying to grow and you're trying to create leverage, you're trying to increase sales, you're trying to remove yourself from it, you're not going to be able to afford an A player. Okay, you're going to be able to you're going to get whoever you can get, okay, to just help you keep the keep the ball moving. Well, as you get bigger and as you get better and as you start to grow, you need to start getting A players inside your organization. Because what A players do is they bear the weight and the responsibility of the decisions that they need to make. If you don't hire A players, they're constantly coming back to you for decisions. They're constantly coming back to you to to tell them what they should do and why they should do it. And, and their answer for everything is, well, I can't do that. I don't know. That's what C and D players do. But an A player says, hey, I'm not sure how to handle this, Zach, but I'm looking into it. I'm going to figure this out and make it a reality. I'll give you, give you some feedback by the end of the day. That's what an A player does. And A players, even though they might be more expensive, they allow you to implement more leverage into your life because you're not the one that has to make all the decisions. You're not the one that has to make all the calls. You're not the one that has to make, to do all that stuff because you have A players inside your organization that are able and willing to make those decisions for you. The goal here with leverage is that we want to go from trading time for money to escaping that game altogether. Okay. We want to go to where we have an asset or we have something that is so valuable that we, we put a very small input of time and we get a very large output of results, which would be income in that regard. Right. And so here are just a couple different tiers of leverage, okay? Number one is labor. This is the lowest tier of leverage where, number one, I trade my time and energy, my labor for money. Then I utilize other people's labor, their time and energy for money, right? And also, just, just so we know, every business uses leverage with their employees. So if every employee that I hired, I paid them the same amount of money that they produced for the business. It's not, there's, there's nothing, nothing beneficial there for, for me as the business owner. So what we have to figure out how to do is to create systems so that for every hour that I pay an employee, they're able to produce multiples in income for the, for the organization or for the business. Right. And again, I just want to be clear on this, that those people need those jobs. Like, People need jobs. People need dependable income. And so we're not taking advantage of anybody. We're not stealing from anybody. But we're allowing the, the sum of the parts is not, is not greater than the, the whole. So as we add employees, we should get more and more efficient, right? Because we should have refined systems. We should, it should allow us to make more money per labor hour inside of our business. I know this might be losing you. Stay with me, okay? So labor is... The, the lowest form of leverage. The next one's software. So this is really interesting because what can you automate inside of software that would remove the human equation altogether? And so one of the things that we always do for our clients, one thing that we do inside of our business is we create automations around 
when we receive messages, when we have interactions online with customers, that they automatically get added to Pipedrive. So there's automatic things that, that, that go out. And so we want to implement automations inside of our business as much as we possibly can because this removes the human equa equation entirely. You have computers doing work that you would have normally had people doing, right? And then the last kind of form of leverage is, is capital, which is money, assets, investments, to where now I have money making money for me instead of labor or having to really even think through the software side of things that I've invested money, I've invested capital, and that capital has given, given me outsized returns where it's, you know, I'm making 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% returns on that investment year after year after year, okay? Right now, if you're watching this, you don't have capital. You probably don't know a lot about automations, but we can start learning how to leverage labor. We remove ourselves from the labor, of, labor equation. We hire people that want and need jobs to produce outsized returns out of their labor for our organization. So if you want to learn more about this, you want to learn how to create higher forms of leverage, then go apply for the Woodworking Business Accelerator Program. This is specifically for those of you that are trying to build custom furniture, uh, trying to scale or grow your custom furniture company. Now, if you're a woodworker, um, it, you can do something else even, it, but if you build furniture, then this is going to help you scale and grow. And so along with this, just so you guys know, there's a limited number of spots with this because I'm not going to serve multiple clients in the same region. So if no one's in your region yet, you're the first to apply, you're a good fit, we'll go ahead and get you into the program and, and start helping you on your way to increasing the leverage in your life, scaling past that twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month mark in your sales, and uh, helping you make decisions, strategic decisions along the way. And so if this has helped you, if this has been a beneficial video to you to kind of expand your mind, help you start thinking differently about, about growing a business, then let me know. Let me know in the comments below. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And um, with that being said, I'm going to wrap this one up. This is episode number 97, y'all. We're almost to 100. Um, thank you so much for your support along the way. But I will see you, my friend, in the next one.